Hello. Uh, yeah, so let's get rolling. Airflow Kubernetes, running on and using Kates. Uh, my name is Jed. I work at Astronomer. I'm also a committer and PMC member at Apache Airflow. So let's see, we're going to talk about Airflow, we're going to talk about Kubernetes, and we're going to talk about Helm. All right, so this is kind of, yeah, Kubernetes pod operator, Kubernetes executor. We see questions all the time around, you know, like, do we need to use them both? Uh, do we have to use them both? Uh, what, what's different about them? So let's, let's step back a little bit and talk about operators and executors in general in Airflow. So operators, let's put our, our DAG author hat on here. What what does this task need to do? Think, think function, right? And then contrast that with, an ex, with your executor choice. Executors, how do I run any task? That's an environment thing, think infrastructure. So let's dig a little more into the operator side of things. So, yeah, you end up having, Airflow has really generic operators that you can use, right? We have a Python operator, we have a bash operator. Really, you can kind of do anything you want with those, um, but there's not a lot of hand-holding either. Um, Airflow also has a bunch of operators that give you tools. So for instance, AWS 3, there's a bunch of S3 operators. If you need to run some, some SQL, there's a Postgres operator. If you need to send an email, there's an email operator. There's a ton of, of options and choices here in this ecosystem. Some you'll have to install providers for, but it's it's really worth it. Uh, this is kind of the secret sauce of Airflow in a lot of ways. Now, where does Kubernetes pod operator fall in the spectrum? I, I think it kind of falls in the generic category a bit. It basically lets you run a container. Uh, it won't normally be Airflow things. Think running something in Java, running something in Go. It, you can also use it for things with, you know, complex Python dependencies that may conflict with your Airflow stack. Uh, so yeah, kind of mental mapping of it's, it's your Docker run in a, in a Kubernetes world. Cool. So then let's talk about the executor side a bit. Um, It, it may be an oversimplification, but I like to think of it this way. It, you kind of get, you pick one, speed or, or isolation. So let's look at this little table I threw together and we'll just kind of kind of rip through here. So local executor and seller executor are both really fast. There's not a lot of startup lag or anything, whereas Kubernetes executor has to go out and spin up a pod on the Kubernetes API. And then the Kubernetes needs to go out and assign it to a node and then the node needs to potentially pull an image and then start the container and python has to get started it's not a huge amount of time but it it's noticeable and when you have a lot of tasks it it can add up um conversely simplicity right local executor is about as simple as you can get Seller Executor has a little extra complexity, uh, but it's not too bad. Kubernetes Executor, you could argue, is the most complex, but there's a caveat there that if you're running in Airflow, if you're running Airflow in Kubernetes and you're running Kubernetes Executor, most of the time your Helm chart will end up taking care of the complexity of the Kubernetes Executor config for you. Now, where does Kubernetes Executor really shine? Well, that's with isolation. Um, Airflow in that case will generate a new worker pod for every task. So you don't have them intermingled. And what that also lets you do is define custom resources for that specific task. So let's say you have a task that needs a, a special secret or needs to mount a special volume with Kubernetes executor, it's really easy to make sure that that task and only that task gets access to those things. So kind of before we continue on, don't force associations between Kubernetes pod operator and Kubernetes executor, or really any executor or operator. Uh, you, you really can use any, any combo you want. So yeah.
let's walk through a couple uh, examples here just so we can kind of visualize what different setups would look like. Let's say we have local executor and we're running a Kubernetes pod operator that's really simple in this case. We're running Hello World. You can run Airflow outside of Kubernetes and run KPO and have it schedule its tasks onto an external Kubernetes cluster. Fair game. You can also run Airflow in Kubernetes and have that task pod land in the same Kubernetes cluster. You can run Airflow in Kubernetes and have it land in a external Kubernetes cluster. So you have a lot of flexibility here. Now let's talk about what it looks like with Kubernetes executor running KPO. Um, so in this case, the scheduler will create a worker pod for that Airflow task. When that Airflow task starts running, it's going to create another pod for Hello World. So you do end up having two pods per task when you're running Kubernetes executor and KPO together. However, if we look at a Python operator, right? You have another, so basically the, the scheduler goes out and it creates a, a worker for that Python operator and you, you just get the one pod there. And again, you can run any operator you want when you're running Kubernetes executor. Um, yeah, cool. So let's say that you have decided that you want to run Airflow on Kubernetes, awesome. So how? Well, you could write your own manifest. Sounds a little painful and fragile maybe. You could write your own Helm chart. If you haven't written a Helm chart before, you'll learn a lot for sure, but you might want to use an existing chart for your production stuff. And there's some options for you. So there's at, at least three that are most common, I'd say. Uh, you have the Bitnami chart, you have the user community chart, which was in old Helm Stable before Helm Stable died. Uh, shout out to Matthew there. And then there's also the official chart. The, the official chart has been around and well released, I guess I should say for a year. Um, it's, it's really by the community for the community. It's, it, the folks that are doing the releases are, are really the same folks that are doing core airflow releases. We have over 90 contributors uh, since that chart has been added to the open source project. It really is production focused. So some things that uh, may be helpful for a development workflow aren't supported, uh, but keep in mind, you know, everything is, is with a production lens. We support, 2.0 plus, and we also support 1.10 plus, but like upgrade if you're still in that boat. It supports nearly all of the executors, uh, all of the ones that you probably would want to use. And then, yeah, there's a, a ton of features and functionality uh, built in enough that, you know, it, it probably has what you need. If it doesn't, then yeah, it, we should be able to add it. So yeah, let us know what use cases we've missed. So let's go through a really simple example. This is kind of like your quick start. There's actually a, a better quick start on, on the website uh, if you want to follow it, but really it can be this as simple as these three commands, Helm repo add, Helm install. And at that point you end up getting a bunch of pods, right? It spins up a database for you, gets the scheduler going, your web server, a worker. Um, and this is a great base to start iterating from. All right, so before I leave you, as I'm running out of time here, uh, where can you go to do more advanced things with Kubernetes Executor, Kubernetes Pod Operator? So KPO actually has a lot of flexibility built into, you know, like overriding things with, with keyword arcs. But if you run into a scenario where something isn't supported, one thing you can do is use a pod template file. So yeah, check that out if you if you are having trouble. Similarly with Kubernetes Executor, there's Executor config pod, pod override, which also lets you override the pod. Uh, it kind of gets mashed together with what Airflow would have created on its own. And then your trump card 
is the pod mutation hook. Airflow basically will pass in the, the pod before it gets sent to the Kubernetes API and gives you an opportunity to, to modify it uh, at the last second. So yeah, keep that in mind. And uh, that is all I have and have time for. So thank you. Uh, I am going to be available in these channels to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, and yeah, hope you've had a good summit. Thanks.